While thinking about how to present the challenges and opportunities that the coronavirus has presented, my mind wandered back to the late Middle Ages. I am, after all, a historian by training, and to the first appearance of the Black Death in Europe in 1348. A few years later, around the year 1353, Giovanni Boccaccio finishes the Cameron, a book containing 100 stories told by seven young women and three young men fleeing from Florence to the countryside, a result of the spread of the plague. Over a period of 10 evenings, for entertainment and for the edification of the group, each youngster had to tell a story based on the theme of the day, chosen by the king or queen, an honorific title that rotated between the youngsters. The third story, told on the first night by Philomena, one of the young women, tells the story of Malkitzedek, an extremely wealthy Jew from Alexandria whose money, Saladin, the conqueror of Crusader Jerusalem in, in 1187, coveted. Saladin tried to trick him into blaspheming Islam by asking him which of the three monotheistic religions was the true one. And Malki Tzedek, after thinking hard and fast, answered using a parable. The parable told the story of a man who had three good sons who he loved equally, and one very precious ring that could only be inherited by one of them, and the one who received it would be the designated heir. Each son did his utmost to persuade his father that he was deserving of the ring. Without their knowledge, the father went to a skilled jeweler and asked him to make two identical copies of the ring. The father gave each son one of the rings without the other son's knowledge. After his death, the sons were surprised to discover that each of them had a ring and that it was impossible to tell which of the three rings was the original one. Hence, said Melchizedek to Saladin, this is the reality today for the three religions. All stick a claim to be the true religion, but the jury is still out. Impressed by this response, Saladin told Malki Tzedek what he had planned to do. The latter loaned Saladin the money he needed and was honored in return by the Sultan. This story stresses the ingenuity of a Jew facing a terrible adversary and his ability to think fast on his feet, adapt quickly to the situation, and use it to his advantage. We are in the grips of the COVID-19 virus, and we have all had to come together very quickly as a community to find workable solutions to enable the semester to continue for our students, teaching staff, and researchers. While the jury is out on how this is all going to end, like Malki Tzedek, necessity has proved to be the mother of all invention, and the university, without doubt a precious jewel, has responded in an impressive manner to the challenges posed by the virus. Though not a storyteller of Boccaccio's abilities, here are some of our coronavirus success stories. The first story is how within just five days, realizing that very soon we would not be able to hold classes on campus, we made the decision to move our teaching online. Quickly setting up a small task force, we purchased the necessary licenses and then spent two intensive days offering our lecturers and students online sessions on how to use the Zoom platform and then continued with the semester. We created a support team made up of both technical staff and students who were the first responders, helping both lecturers and students with any problems that arose. The move online in such a short time was a tremendous achievement, made possible thanks to the co cooperation and dedication of many people, academics, alongside administrative and technical staff who worked together to pull this off. The results speak for themselves. Lectures take place at their scheduled time and are reasonably well attended. In addition, most of the courses are also being recorded so as to allow those who are unable to attend in real time because they have children at home or are working or do not have a good internet connection to learn the materials in their own good time. The feedback from both lecturers and students has been largely positive. Another success story is how we have been working in partnership with the Students' Union. Together we are working to alleviate as much as is possible the financial burden of our students many of whom have lost their jobs because of the lockdown. We have allowed them to defer payments until June and to divide the payments in a way that will make it easier for them. We have allowed those who wish to leave the university dormitories without incurring a fine. We have set up a fund to loan money to students in need. The Office of the Dean of the Students, together with the Student Union, have provided mobile sticks for Bedouin students who live in areas with poor internet connections so that they can continue with their studies. Volunteering in the local community is part of our DNA, and this spirit has again come to the fore during the current crisis. Our staff and students have been involved in many initiatives, from volunteering to man the virology labs in Soroka and working in the drive-in testing sites for the virus 
to working with the municipality to distribute food packages to people in need and visiting pensioners who live on their own. The lecturers' union set up a fund to aid cleaners and other workers on campus who are in need, while the Union of Administrative and Technical Staff donated hundreds of vacation days for other staff members who have a deficit of vacation days. Exams are always a stressful time for students, and in corona time, how much more so? In a normal exam period, over 3,000 exams take place on campus. And now, even with the relaxation of the lockdown and return to a semblance of normality, we are still going to be limited in how many students we can have on campus at any one time. Unlike Zoom for teaching purposes, technological solutions for online exams raise many issues, including ethical ones. And we are working to find solutions that include alternative ways of grading courses, prioritizing exams in courses that demand a handwritten test, and using multiple choice exams where possible, as these can be done relatively easy online. This exam period is going to be a challenging one, and lecturers and students both are going to have to be prepared to do things differently. A major challenge has been keeping our research ongoing. As the restrictions and guidelines became more stringent, we had to find creative ways to keep the labs open while making sure that our staff and students remained healthy and followed the directives of the Ministry of Health. This challenge was not made easier by the fact that due to the governmental guidelines, 70% of our administrative and technical staff had to be on paid leave and we had to make do with a very small part of our workforce. While many of our researchers rose to the Corona Task Force Challenge initiated by the President, about which you will hear more later, others have found themselves at home with their children and partners, having to both teach and carve out time for research. I have been in constant touch with our academic staff and I am full of admiration for how they have risen to the challenge and have done their utmost to keep up with their research. A university should be far more than just a place to come and study for a degree. Being on campus provides many opportunities for interaction with people from different backgrounds, as well as meeting international students from all over the world. A chance encounter with a professor can result in a conversation leading to new research directions. Browsing in the library can change lives. I know that for a fact. And the cafeterias are wonderful places for, take, for talking politics, exploring identities, and preferring opinions on the most profound, or perhaps not, issues. The virus and the need for social distancing have curtailed all of these things. And for us here at BGU, where the campus is such a central part of university life, this is a major challenge. Our students come to the university because of the, because of the quality of the degrees they get, but also because of the student life on and around campus. And no online technology can replace or replicate this. In the same manner as it was for Boccaccio's youngsters, the togetherness is an important part of the university experience, and we need to find ways, coronavirus notwithstanding, to get our students back on campus. However, we also realize that the virus and the move online has changed the way we do things, not just in the short term, but also for the future. When a vaccine is eventually discovered and made widely available, it is quite clear that we will not be going back to how things were done BC before corona. AC after corona, perhaps implies a hybrid classroom where students who, who desire to be so will be physically present in the classroom, but others might possibly tune in online. It might be possible that instead of teaching the same basic maths course five times over, it will be, it will be possible to teach it once while also being broadcast online, hence allowing lecturers to develop new courses or devote more time to smaller groups of students. Adopting flipped classrooms will allow for greater student participation and more hands-on learning rather than just passively listening to a lecture. All this goes hand in hand with making sure that we give our students relevant toolkits to better prepare them for changing job markets and skills such as knowing how to work in groups to solve problems will be de rigueur. New degrees and flexible teaching programs will be in demand and our lecturers will have to develop and teach new courses. Corona time has also strengthened our conviction that collaborative research is crucial and the division into departments and faculties can sometimes make this difficult to achieve. It has also reinforced the fact that we need to find ways to better inform each other about cutting edge research that is being done in the university so as to maximize our potential and create synergy that makes the whole far greater than its parts. It is an opportunity to reassess our structures and the way we do business 
in order to help us achieve our long-term goal of being a world-leading university. I very much hope that this virtual Board of Governors is an exception and not the rule, and that next year we will be able to host you all on campus and both commemorate and celebrate, albeit a year late, our 50th anniversary with you while looking forward to an exciting future. I am certain that we will all have plenty of corona stories to tell and that this challenging period will have an impact on how we live our lives and decide what is important and what is less so. We are determined to continue to make an impact on the Negev, Israel and the world and we are grateful to have you all as our partners and friends. Next year in Beersheba at Ben-Gurion University of the Negev. Thank you to one and all.